Welcome to Canny Cross Conversations with me, Michelle. And me, Louise, talking all things dogs, running and canny sports. This episode is sponsored by the Get Stronger Run a Faster 5K course. It's great for canny crossers and runners to improve their 5K time and keep up with their dogs. Welcome to a new season of Canny Cross Conversations. This season, we have been busy preparing all summer. We're so excited to bring you a season full of all the Canny Cross events that you can find across the UK. Um, we talk to various events organisers all about their races. So as you go through the season, you'll hopefully find some new races that you've not heard about before. We've had a great time, haven't we, Louise? Yeah, no, we have. And it's, it's been enlightening. And we might actually this season get Michelle to a race <laughs> I think as I've talked to event organizers about Poppy's reactivity I'm gradually coming around to the idea that maybe event organizers understand reactive dogs and that plenty of people have them um yeah. so I am coming around to the idea you're right and I think that's key I think you know because I've had clients that have been a bit nervous about going but actually the events people do understand and everyone, you know, you see lots of reactive dogs, but everyone knows how to deal with it and you keep your dog away. So, um, yeah, it's absolutely fine. So on our first uh, episode of our Canny Cross um, se- event series, we talked to Wendy Clark from Canny Cross Midlands. So um, where uh, Canny Cross Midlands is probably one of the biggest um, events that go in and someone's going to shout at me now and say no it's not but anyway um one of the biggest ones um in the UK so it's really interesting it's the one I race at um most of all because it's local um but it was really really interesting to um to talk to Wendy sound quality isn't brilliant at times so bear with us but um I think you will get the most out of it and uh, let us know if you're going to come and join us this season at Canning Cross Midlands. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to this week's Canning Cross Conversations. And this week we have Wendy Clark, who is the camping queen at Canning Cross Midlands. So if you've ever been to a Canning Cross Midlands event, you will be greeted by Wendy on the gate. So welcome, Wendy. Hi. So just introduce and tell us a bit about you and about your connection to Canning Cross Midlands, if you can. Yeah, I've been doing Canicross Cross for approximately eight years. Um, I happened to go to a Canicross Cross Midlands event with my sister, Lisa Bowes, um, one Easter, uh, their finale. And I wasn't actually a member then or anything. I just happened to go with her as she was a member. And um, I got a little bit merry around the bonfire, as you do. <laughs> and, said, and ever since then, you know, I've never looked back. It's been one of those things that's just progressed. And what, did you have a dog then or were you... I've got Bella, who's my old girl, who's like, she's 14 now, so she's retired. And I just happened to say, oh, I think Bella would love this. So Lisa was like, oh, do you want to start running? I'm like, yeah, I'll give it a go. <laughs> and like, I've never looked back and I've sort of progressed. Um, I'm still slow. I'm still team sloth. But at the end of the day, I'm getting off the sofa and I'm having a good go at it. You are. Yeah, exactly. So tell us about Bella. What kind of dog is Bella? Bella's a Cocker Spaniel. Uh, working cocker um she's now 14 so like I say she's retired and at the moment I'm running my two friend my friend's two dogs and what are they uh, they're spaniels as well one's a springer one's a cocker and do you run them together I can't remember yes I do yeah good on you <laughs> <laughs> so it was just literally a drunken night I'm oh, sorry a merry night around the fire that got you into uh canny cross it was that. <laughs> I love it. I was talking today to somebody on a Canny Cross Taster about all the different reasons we get into Canny Cross. I've not heard that one before, so that's a new one for me, Wendy. <laughs> you want to add for it? Jolene Carter's um, vodka Haribos. <laughs> <laughs> we're all fit and healthy, the ones that, you know, when we take it, when we go racing, no alcohol passes our lips. <laughs> So wh- tell us a little bit about Canny Cross Midlands. How long has it been going? Because uh, it is really, I mean, it's the one I go to, the one I did the whole season last year. 
Um, but who's how long's it been going, and, and sort of the area that it that it goes through? So it's been going for about ten or eleven years, something like that. Um, it was started by a handful of people who um, had reactive dogs and wanted to start something where they could run their dogs in muzzles. Um, I know some of the people that started it were like David Hanley, Kirsty Handley, who's now Kirsty Thompson, uh, Ruth Graham, um, Claire Martin, um, and there was a handful of others as well that started it. Yes, we've had Claire on the um, podcast before with uh, about yeah. Rup Park Run. That's so, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they still, well, Claire still competes as well, doesn't she? She does compete, yes. Um, she, she, well, she's, I think she's trying to go to Europe with Rob. Um, they've been competing quite a lot too to try and get to like the internationals and the nationals and things like that. So she's doing quite well as far as I can, I can make out. Good, brilliant. That's good. So tell us a little bit more about the event. Um, how, how, how's it, how's it run? you know from that sort of the each one and also the sort of whole series it's run by a group of like volunteers we've all got other jobs and we all do this in our spare time uh, we've all got different roles it's a not-for-profit club so every single penny that's made by County Cross Midlands goes back into the club for equipment and kit um, I've been on the committee for approximately four years um, and I was persuaded to come on by Alan who's the old chairman um, because I already did a lot for them. Um, and he said, you might as well come on committee because you're doing enough for us anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a club for all abilities. Um, we try and encourage people to come to training runs and beginners runs to get them into it. We've got Kirsty who runs our beginners runs and she's absolutely fantastic at them. She's always got a kit bag. She's always full of knowledge. Um, so, yeah, so we, we, we try and encourage everybody from the fastest to the slowest to Jack Russells to Spaniels, Pointers, Canny Hounds, um, Euro Hounds, you name it, you're invited. Yeah, well, one of my uh, one of my group uh, runs a Jack Russell. So uh, he comes quite a few times and, and she loves it, absolutely loves it. So the day, so you can you, the, it goes over two days, doesn't it? And can you... Can- you can race Saturday or Sunday as individual races, but if you ha- if you want to go for podium places, you have to race both days, and then it's a combined time of the two, and the fastest gets first, second, third. And do you? Um, do, so, and then, how does the series work? Um, the series. I've written down how the series works somewhere. <laughs> yeah, because it always confuses well, me. <laughs> the winter. Um, you gain points for each race depending on where you come, but everybody will get one point. There's five races over the season, um, four weekends and a four-day finale over the Easter. Um, How many do they have to complete? Is it seven? Yeah, total of 12 race days over the season, 11 count towards the series, and you need to complete seven days racing to qualify for the series in the same class. But after seven races... Um, your lowest points will be deleted so that only your, your top seven score goes towards the series. Yeah, so your fastest race times. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, which is why I had to go and do Easter for four days. Well, I did three days, I think, this yeah. year. That's quite a commitment, actually. That must be hard, racing four days on the trot. Yeah. I think people were quite surprised by it, weren't they? Because we're used to doing two, and then even just doing three was quite hard on the body. This year was quite nice because we actually ran with dogs all the time. <laughs> the past couple of Easter's has been too hot and we've had to do a couple of dogless races. Okay. Although it was quite hot this year anyway, wasn't it? And we yeah. then the course was shortened. The course was shortened and the times were brought forward. We started at seven. So so you take the welfare of the annual animals, or oh, sorry, the dogs. <laughs> Sounds like we've got lots of animals. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. so what what are the guidelines that you as kind of cross midlands use for that do you know well for our dogs is top priority so race temperature and minimizing heat stroke um it's really important to us i've uh, been heavily involved in the research done by ann carter yeah uh, and we're basically we're the first people to use the wet um bulb ugbt it's called wet bulb globe um temperature thingy yeah uh, Basically, she's although she's not committee anymore, she's still on the end of the phone. She's still heavily involved with us, and she's still the person we go to if we've got any questions or whatever. Um, 
but yes we do reduce the temperature at, we reduce the the racing at uh 14 so if it gets to 14 the courses will be shortened no, nobody will run any further than 3k and if it gets to 20 degrees it's dogless yeah fortunately it wasn't because that would have been really hard work especially at Casson, the hill just goes yeah. straight up at the start it was horrible <laughs> Anyway, sorry, I'm getting quiet. <laughs> but if anyone wants to find out more about Anne Carter, we um, episode two, I think it is, Michelle, isn't it? Yeah, we, it's it one is. of our first podcasts that we ever did with Anne and um, Emily. Emily, yep. I want to say Emily, there. Emily uh, on their research in heat stroke and dogs. So it's a fascinating one, especially with the weather as it is at the moment or has been, even in September. You know, it's still it's hotter now, isn't it, than it used to be. I mean, September's not too bad because dogs are used to sort of like walking during the summer in the warmth. Yeah, um, they acclimatise, don't they, a little? It's just yeah. really difficult because they've been running in cold temperatures. So for them to suddenly be forced to run at like 15, 16 degrees, it's, you know, it's a shock to the system for them. That's why we take it, you know, quite seriously. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. So what are your normal distances for a race then? Is it a 5K or a 3K option? We have a, it's, we call it long course to short course because sometimes it's not quite 5k and not quite 3k or just over 5k. So it's called long like course. Ones. Long, <laughs> long course to short course. I'm quite happy when it's reduced. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> What's called an odds and bods course, which is basically, um, it's um, a not for competition course and that's usually over 2k. And then we also have various um, kiddies races, which, um, 13 to 18, um, under 13s, and then 8 to 13, and then under 8s. So we try and encourage the kids because they are our future. Exactly. Well, talk to me a little bit more about the kids because we interviewed a junior canny crosser back in June um, yeah. before we published this episode. So, um, And we heard about how there's not many youngsters getting into canny cross. How popular are, are your races for juniors? <laughs> Our junior races are very, very, very popular. We, I mean, last season we had most of the time eight or nine under eights, um, between five and ten eights to thirteens. Yeah, so the thirteen to fifteens again, we have between ten and fifteen um, youngsters. Can vary all the time, um, but it's what's good is it's both boys and girls. It's not just boys that are interested in running. The girls are coming up and they're giving the boys a run for their money. Yes. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Yeah. <laughs> so, so can when when they're 15 or 16, can they then run in the adult races? Is that how it works? Yes, then they move up to the um like the open classes. And and tell us about the age range of those because um yeah, it's so you go from 16 to let's try and think. So then there's it's 17 to 30 which is the open the first open class um then it's 31 to 40 which is then called yeah masters is 40 plus veteran is 50 plus so the open female must be up to 40 so it's 17 to 40s um Mm -hmm. so yeah and then, then that is split between male and female so i i run in the veterans um, and it's really interesting, actually, because and, and there's a few of us around the sort of late 50s that are running and we've been doing all right. Uh, but there's suddenly a lot more coming in in their early 50s now. And we're sort of thinking perhaps we should have another age group, 60 up. <laughs> <laughs> to give us a little bit of hope of getting on the podium. <laughs> Not that I'm competitive. Yeah, it's quite though. a big. It's quite a big age category, isn't it? Yeah. Have you Have you thought about that, Wendy? Is that an option? It's something that can always be brought up at the committee meetings, um, because the committee meeting on um, at Easter when we did the AGM, um, a lot of the kids want them to, us to bring in um, splits between male and female on the kids. Yeah. So we'll try it for twelve months. If it works, then we'll keep keep it and bring it in. So it's basically try it and we'll keep it if it works if it doesn't we drop it so we're going to try it for 12 months um that's for the kids and i think that's for two two dog scooter as well oh wow that's really good so that's do you get many kids um doing the bike dual or the scooter are they allowed to do that 
Uh, we've got a junior wheels, and that's over the like the um, not for competition course, so that's up to two k, um, and they can do that. Um, but it's just classed as junior wheels, so it's either scooter or biking, just to basically um, give them a go. I think um, that's we do, yeah. Some that uh, I think our, our youngest was fifteen last. Well, it wasn't. The youngest was five on a little tiny push bike with the dog. So that was actually quite funny because he was like, I don't like running, but I like my bike. So <laughs> mum asked us, we said, yes, of course, give it a go. And it was so cute to watch. Yeah, they had a little dog on the front and they were just scootering along. It was really good, oh. actually. So if you yeah, if you head over to County Cross Midlands web, um, social media, I think it's on there somewhere. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really good. Talk to me about the uh, novice um, races, because I think County, uh, County Cross Midlands do a really good novice so I run a group in in my area um and I always try and persuade people to race um not not necessarily for competitive but just to go through that process and the novices I think are really good really welcome so I had a um client with a really reactive dog wears a muzzle Candy Cross has done wonders for it and I persuaded her to come and do the novice and she I can't say, say highly enough about it. So what do you sort of do in the novice one? To talk us through that. Novice is the short course, so that's usually approximately 3K. Uh, but we do have a novice briefing, which is done by Liz. Now, sometimes she'll do it on site, but sometimes she'll put it online. But basically, it's just to say, um, introduce you to running, um, give room when you pass in, and then she'll talk you through it. And she'll say, at the end of the day, give yourself space, give yourself time. If you want to walk it, walk it. It doesn't matter. Nobody gives the monkeys. Um, just enjoy your race. We, we try and talk you through it if we can. Um, and we do always say to people, rather than go straight into open, because a lot of people go, well, I can run 5K. And we go, yes, but it's different in a race environment. If you come in from running a 5K run um, and then go straight into an open with a dog, it's totally different to running a 5K race. So we always say to people, please come in. Please start at novice, do at least one stroke, two races at novice, and then move up to open because you will find the difference in basically the start because it's mental starts at like open. The difference between even the 3K open, the dogs on the start line because they know what they're doing, they're, they are, and they want to get going straight away. Whereas novices is a bit more relaxed, there's more time between starts, um, and people tend to be. Um, a little bit easier with people on, on novice. So if you went straight into open, you'd be expected to know what to do. You'd yeah. be expected to know to pull your dog in, know to slow down when someone's overtaking and all that. Whereas novice, it's given that you don't really know what you're doing yet. So we will give them more leeway. So if somebody says, oh, they didn't pull their dog in, it's like, well, they are novice. Yeah. And, and I started off in the novice. Yeah. I started yeah. off as a novice and, it, and I think I did... Uh, yeah, a few races uh, that season as novice, and it, and it was brilliant because it does give you the idea of what it's like and um, the type of course and the start, which is quite scary, really. And as you say, when you go into an open race, it, the noise level is um, yeah interesting. I, it actually, I mean, I get quite emotional watching the starts because it's to me the dogs are so excited and they so want to go, and I'm like, oh, oh, this is so happy. You know, and I get quite emotional watching it, and and I, sometimes I've cried watching them because the dogs, ah, oh, it's just they just want to go. And if you're a novice, you're going, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you, and you're right, and actually, it's really interesting because this season Pickle has really got hyper at the beginning of the start, which she never used to be. I think there was one. Did we on the? Friday isn't it you race in the afternoon and I think she said thought well what's going on here so she was really calm but then the rest of the weekend she was like yeah come on let's go um so they do know what's happening so going to a novice is I think a really good start Michelle yeah well I was just going to ask just as somebody who's never ever raced because I have a very reactive dog very anxious dog um, and I'm anxious myself about it I think I probably make things worse as well just talk us through the rules then of, you know, are you meant to be pulling your dog in if somebody's passing? Is that is that the done thing? Um, or? So, yes, we do ask you to pull your dog into the side. 
but like I say, you are given more leeway and novice because we know that you are a beginner. Um, so, but we do stagger starts. So it's we don't have mass starts. We have staggered starts, and we ask you for an approximate time on your running. So you shouldn't, by rights, if you've given us the right time, overtake the person in front. Okay, so you've got the course to yourself in theory. If it all works to plan, if it all works to plan. You should be setting off in, in it's twenty. It's actually thirty seconds, I think, on on novice, not twenty. So that thirty seconds, unless you've all of a sudden gone, oh, I did a lot of running this week and caught the person, you shouldn't actually be overtaking them because your time should be what's put on the sheet and the person in front should be faster than you. Okay. Yeah, and it, it does tend to work, even in the open classes, it does tend to work like that, doesn't it, unless um, yeah. some, something goes wrong. I do overtake sometimes. So there's all the other normal stuff that we teach, Michelle, with, um, you know, running up behind someone and telling them that you're there is really important. And I don't yeah. think... A lot. Of, well, I think people do use it, but I think they could use it more. I don't know what you say. Yeah. So communication as you pass yeah. it as well, letting people know you're there. And so, and um, I always put my thumb up whichever side they say they're passing on. So if they say they're passing left, I do like left. Say yeah. they're passing, I put my thumb up right, so I know that I've heard. Yeah. They know that I've heard. Yeah. Um, and they can pass safely then. So we would just try and advise people just to make just to acknowledge that you've heard the person behind. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do that as well, definitely. Yeah, uh, no, that's really good. And that's something you wouldn't think of unless you'd raced before, isn't it? So that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. How many people do you generally get on your events, Wendy? Well, last season we were selling out in an hour. Wow. Wow. At, um, at 450 for a normal weekend because we've been selling out. I mean, they went on sale at five o'clock. Um, by seven o'clock, Becky was supposed to be leaving for work and she had to say, I'm going to have to sit here and watch it because we've got 40, 40 places left. So I, it was selling I, two yeah. hours. It was, it was a nightmare. I, I think I went on at half six because I got up to teach and I thought, oh, I'll go and register. It's, a, it's yeah, it's a nightmare. Yeah. I mean, Easter, we got 1,200 starts at Easter and that was still sold out by midday. It, that's incredible. Just, I mean, I guess that says a lot about how good your races are. That <laughs> everybody wants to do them. But you, 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 you're one of the only. Well, you of, of the people we've talked to so far. You do everything, don't you? Well, you do. You do canny cross, bike, draw, and scooter. We do. We only. The only thing we don't do is rigs. Yeah. And your course is so. What would you say your courses are like uh, compared to to maybe just a canny cross course? Um, we have to think of a bike going around them, so it might be field edges as well as trail. Um, but we do have to think of lines, and we also have to think of dogs running through fast with tree stumps and stuff like that because bike jaw, yet yeah, they have to think ahead. Yeah. Uh, we do have Ruth, who's a bike drawer, and she sets the courses up because she knows on a bike whether it's workable. Yeah, yeah. So, as a, and I suppose as a canny crosser, that the, the, the trails may be not as interesting as yeah. if it's just canny cross. They're not as technical, but they're fast. That's all I've got to say about it. They are fast, and and there yes. are some technical bits. Um, yeah, we'll I, mean, I really enjoy it. We always try and put a little bit of technical in if we can, um, just to make it more interesting for people. But it can't always, but we do try. Yeah, I think one of my favourites as well, I didn't actually finish, I finished the course, was Loco, is it Loco Park? Was that the one with the hills? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, a lot. Oh, Limcombe, <laughs> Limcombe, I think it was, which I, I twisted my ankle on the start and hobbled round, and I was really annoyed because I, it was quite, it was hilly, but it was quite nice. Um, <laughs> I, I, I thought, thought, oh, we'll really enjoy this, but anyway, it wasn't to be. So I've got to. That's an unfinished event for me. I need to come back and do that. <laughs> yeah, but I guess you know, a fast having a fast course. It's not necessarily technical. That is a draw in itself, isn't it? You can get yourself a PB. Um, you can really yeah. give the dogs a good run. Um, where where do your races take place then? I'm I'm just trying to figure out whether one is within reach of me in up north. What's yeah, your furthest north course? 
um, from most of them around um, central. So we try and get them as central as possible. Yeah. We have got one down Box End, which is sort of Milton Keynes way. Um, we're trying to look sort of North Midlands, but finding venues because we have to have private venues because bike, drawing scooter. Yeah, we can't do what Canics do because they um, go on normal trails because of the general public. Yeah, and I when we had imagine it. We had Canic a couple of years ago, and although Canic is lovely, general public aren't. <laughs> and you feel like you can see, just stop, 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 stop. There's a race going on. I don't care. I'm on a personal best. <laughs> in front of people, and you're like, can't do this. It's just too much yeah. like hard work. Yeah, which is a shame, isn't it? Because um, it's just nice. Just to it was a lovely venue. Yeah, I never got to that one. So, um, yes, that's a shame. So, as the camping queen, Wendy, <laughs> talk to us about camping. <laughs> Uh, yes, um, we're getting now between 60 and 100 campers, whereas before, when I first started doing it, we were getting 20, 25. And you've got a lot of tow ropes as well, haven't you? Yeah, I've got tow ropes. Yes, I do a lot of towing on and off. So, so what, <laughs> it's a good what, job what? I've got a truck. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been towed out. Of, I don't think I've been towed out of a kind of cross Midlands, but I've been towed out of something. Um so, so what 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 goes on? Because obviously the racing's sort of finished by lunchtime, isn't it? So what can campers expect? Um, if we've got a hall or a marquee or anything like that, we try and put a quiz on of an evening. Um, the afternoon at Box End, we'll try and put swimming on down in the um, bottom lake. Um, there's always... Um, we've had talks before as well, whereas like we had a Lucille talk at Lincoln. Uh, uh, um, so we do try and put stuff on for people in the afternoons it's up to you if you want to come and join it you don't have to like I said the quiz works well um, we've normally got beer or cider on which is in aid of Foxhound Welfare um, which we do support um, quite clearly and they're the, the, like the, the rescue charity that we support um, so yeah we, we try and put stuff on if we can try and make a bit of money for Foxhound Welfare that's brilliant. That's yeah. brilliant. No, they always look good. And again, if you follow social media, especially during the season, you see lots going on. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I want to, we want to ask about climate and we sort of touched on it earlier, but what are you doing sort of environmentally and climate wise, I suppose, for um, as, as Canny can can Cross Midlands? Are you um, doing anything to help? In what way? Well, sort of the stuff that you use, um, as you set the races out and things like that, um, you know. Um, um, cable ties to string on the bikes. Um, we're asking people to reuse paper clip, um, not paper clip, safety pins if they can. Yeah. Um, at the moment, we can't do anything with race numbers because um, people lose them. <laughs> yeah. But we have talked about trying to re if people have got them and they're clean to hand them in and try to reuse them. Um, but that's something that was discussed but wasn't decided. Um, so yeah, we, we're trying. Yeah. Do people uh, use the same race number throughout the season? Because I know I've I've seen a few. No, they use it for the same race weekend. Right. Uh, if you've seen some of the race numbers after a race weekend, you can't read uh, the number. Especially, although I have got some. Here. Yeah, a bit of mud. I can imagine. Unreadable. Yeah, if they are clean, we are going to have a talk about them being okay. handed back in to be cleaned yeah. up to be reused. But at the moment, most people's are that dirty. <laughs> you can't even read the number or the chip. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. And what about medals? Do you give medals out, or is it all about the podium at the end? Um, it's we. It's all about the series. We do a series, either rosette or medal. Yeah. Uh, but we tend to give dog treats out at the moment. Yeah. So the dogs will get a bag as a finisher's prize, which was oh, what people cool. wanted last year. Oh, you've that's done, a lovely idea. I like that. You've done a variety of things, haven't you? Because you um, you did key rings as well at a time. For two seasons. They we, went quite we, well. Yeah. Like they're, those. yeah they're, um, useful, they're wooden ones as well, so they were quite good as well. Yeah. The end of season medal last year was uh, wood. Um, so we don't tend to go for metal. If we can, we'll use wood or we'll use recycled materials. Yeah. 
No, it's good. It, it, no, it's, it's, a, it's a well-run series. I mean, I'm a bit biased because that's the main one that I do. Yeah. Um, but uh, And because it's local, basically. But, it, but people travel from far and wide, don't they, Wendy? We've got a lot of people coming up from Scotland, down from Scotland. We've got uh, up from Cornwall. Yeah. Um, so a, a wide following, a very wide following. Then so, it's nice because you get to know people and uh, you, you're racing against the same people as well. So it is quite, uh, you get, get competitive with other people as well, but, you know, we get there. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a very unique event. Do you offer um, any race photographs? We have Jackie Burrell on site. I don't know if you've heard of Jackie Burrell. She's our main photographer. She's absolutely fantastic. She gets some amazing shots. She really, really does. Yeah, usually at the top of a hill when you're just about to die, and she's there. Top of the hill just as you come off. Yeah. <laughs> she did some great ones at Catton actually at the start. So I really like that because she, she sort of did a series of your start of you going off, which was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. They were quite good. So yeah, she does. And over the two days, she doesn't go in the same place. So you sort of come across her as you're racing around. Oh, good. And try and smile. (laughs) (laughs) So just to finish up, uh, Wendy, why do you think people should come to Canicross Midlands events and what makes it special? We always try to be friendly. We try to be helpful. Um, We are a club, not a business. So everything we make goes back into the club, goes back into equipment, goes back into us making your races better. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. And as I said before, they, you're on social media, you're on Facebook, aren't you, um, as Candy Cross Midlands. So go and follow them, but we'll put everything below and we'll put the website address in the show notes as well, Wendy. So brilliant. So, Wendy, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. And I shall see you as I drive in, hopefully on nice dry days. Um, <laughs> yeah. season, or during this season, should I She's always smiling though. So she's your first pot of call as you come into the race. She's always smiling. So thank you for that. Brilliant. My mom, always last, but always smiling. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. It's a very good one. Brilliant. Well, we hope you've enjoyed. Hope to see you, or Wendy and I hope to see you um, at some Canning Cross Midlands events. And Michelle. Thank you do. Good. You're very welcome, Michelle. Thank you. That's good to know. Yeah, you sound very <laughs> beginner friendly. They are very. Brilliant. We'll see you on the next episode.
Hello. Good evening. Did you see on um, Messenger? Emily was asking a question. Messenger? Ooh. Yeah. I've just been having tea, so. That's all right. All right, okay. Let's see. Yeah. What structure are. Oh, is this for the course? Yeah. Hello, Wendy. Hello. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you were at the right time there. That was so funny. <laughs> we were we were in the middle of a podcast and suddenly you appear. <laughs> I was just like putting it on, so I was trying to work out and I was like, right, I'll get it ready, I'll get it all ready, and I'll know what I'm doing. So and then I went, Oh shit, I'm on a meeting. So I was trying to get <laughs> <good then. laughs> we like, It was the funniest oh. timing, honestly, wasn't it? We <laughs> We'd had a few issues in that I kept making mistakes, so it was just like, oh, God, there's something else to edit out now. <laughs> never mind. Is it warm where you are? We've got rain here. We've got rain today, yeah. We've had rain, um, but I'm sat outside at the minute because it's quite warm. Oh, where right. are you based, Wendy? I'm Kilby Bridge. Right. She's not far... Well, where am I? I'm, I'm Market Harbour, so... Uh, not far away. Not, not too far from Wistow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we've got some nice warmer weather coming, have we? <laughs> Maybe. It's not raining at the moment, so. <laughs> oh, there's hope. There's hope. Right. Okay. Let's uh, let's go for this because um, I want my tea. <laughs> I've just been teaching. So, uh, right. I'm just going to put the, yeah, where are we? Here we go. I'm just going to put the questions up here so we've got an idea. We might go off um, off it. Yeah. Yeah, but we've just been, literally, we're doing, we're going to set, put these out in September. So um, it's uh, just about the events, really, because we thought we would. So we've been talking to lots of people, so it's quite exciting. Yeah. So, yeah, so you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fine. Right, okay, how would you like me to introduce you? Wendy Clark? Just Wendy will do. Yeah, but what, what, what about your connection? So what are you in um, County Cross Midlands? Camping Queen. Camping Queen from the yeah. <laughs> Rex, everywhere, Wherever it's mud or sunshine, she's there, aren't you, Wendy? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm cranking. There's a clicking noise. Is that just birds or something around? Can you hear something? You just cut in and out very slightly. So um, let's see. Let's see how we go. Um, let me clap from, um, let's see how we go. Okay, I'll do that, and then I'll get you to introduce yourself, um, and then we might ask. We'll ask you about how you got into. Well, we'll go through the questions, sort of, um, about how you got into County Cross Midlands, and you, who started it up. It was was it, it wasn't. Are you frozen? Oh no, you're still there. Who who started it up, Wendy? Oh, the internet's in and out, isn't it? Yeah, she might be better going inside. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. <clears throat> Wendy, can you hear us? You're freezing up, Wendy. I think it might. Do you want to go a bit closer to your um, internet hub? Super excited. That was oh, David Handy. I haven't got any travel. We ha we can't. You keep you keep cutting out, freezing, Wendy. Right, no problem. Um, best thing I can do is um, it, yeah, because it's my mobile data. You see, and I I haven't got Wi Fi or anything here. Oh, All right. Okay. Okay, well, let's see how we let's see how we go. Um, yeah, let's see how we go, and I can change it. Right, okay. So I'm going to introduce you, and then we'll start. Oh, I've lost the questions. Where are they? They're still in there. No, it's all right. I yeah. closed it down. I'm sorry. Um, let's see how we go. Let's get on with it then. So um, we'll see. We'll see how we go. 
and we won't leave, keep okay. you too long. Yeah? So yeah. I'm going to clap, and then we'll get, get, I'll introduce you, and then we'll get going. Don't rush off at the end. I'm going to finish the uh, podcast as I normally would, and then I'll turn off the recording. So don't, if you can, hold on, and uh, we'll do it that way. Okay? okay. Brilliant. You all right, Michelle? Yep. I'm good. Good. Okay. I'm just turning my phone off so it doesn't be jarring. <laughs> right, can I do that again? <laughs> right, let's go. Welcome to this week's Canny Cross Conversations. And this week we have Wendy Clark, the camping creek. Well, I can't even speak now. The camping... I'm going to start again. Start again, <laughs> sorry. I've been really bad. We've done so many like, just lately. Uh, just getting my words in this. Right, I'm going to go again. Welcome to this week's Canny Cross Conversations. And this week we have Wendy Clark, who is the camping queen at Canny Cross Midlands. So if you've ever been to a Canny Cross Midlands event, you will be greeted by Wendy on the gate. So welcome, Wendy. Hi. So just introduce and tell us a bit about you and about your connection to Canny Cross Midlands, if you can. Yeah, I've been doing Canny Cross for approximately eight years. Um, I happened to go to a Canny Cross Midlands event with my sister, Lisa Bowes. Um, one Easter, uh, their finale, and I wasn't actually a member then or anything. I just happened to go with her as she was a member, and um, I got a little bit merry round the bonfire as you do, <laughs> and said, it. And ever since then, you know, I've never looked back. It's been one of those things that's just progressed. And um, what well, did you have a dog then, or were you? I got Bella, who's my old girl, who's like she's fourteen now, so she's retired, and I just happened to say, oh, I think Bella would love this. So Lisa was like, oh, do you want to start one? I'm like, yeah, I'll give it a go. <laughs> and like, I've never looked back and I've sort of pro- progressed. Um, I'm still slow. I'm still team sloth. But at the end of the day, I'm getting off the sofa and I'm having a good go at it. You are. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So tell us about Bella. What kind of dog is Bella? Bella's a cocker spaniel, a uh, working cocker. Um, she's now 14. So like I say, she's retired. And at the moment, I'm running my two friend, my friend's two dogs. And what are they? Uh, they're spaniels as well. One's a Springer, one's a Cocker. And do you run them together? I can't remember. Yes, I do. Yeah, good on you. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just literally a drunken night. Oh, sorry, a merry night round the fire that got you into uh, Canny Cross. <laughs> it was that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I was talking today to somebody on a Canny Cross Taster about all the different reasons we get into Canny Cross. I've not heard that one before, so that's a new one for me, Wendy. <laughs> new one to add for it. Jolene Carter's um, vodka Harry Bows. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all fit and healthy, the ones that, you know, when we take it, when we go racing, no alcohol passes our lips. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about Canny Cross Midlands. How long has it been going? Uh, Because it is really, I mean, it's the one I go to, the one I did the whole season last year. Um, But who's, how long has it been going and and sort of the area that it it goes through? Exactly how long it's been going. I think it's been going for approximately 10 or 11 years. Um, Wow. Okay, <clears throat> might have to do that bit again. by a handful of people because uh, Wendy, they got Wendy, dog. Um, Wendy, 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 you froze. So, <laughs> so sorry, you're going to have to. So, if you can say from it's been going for ten or eleven years, I will do it. Yeah, yeah, I will do. Don't worry, um, and we'll we'll carry on from there. So, I'm just going to clap again so I know where to edit it. Yeah, and then carry on from there. So it's been going for about 10 or 11 years, something like that. Um, it was started by a handful of people who um, had reactive dogs and wanted to start something where they could run their dogs in muzzles. Um, I know some of the people that started it were like David Hanley, Kirsty Handley, who's now Kirsty Thompson, uh, Ruth Graham, um, Claire Martin, um, and there was a handful of others as well that started it. Yes, we've had Claire on the um, podcast before with uh, about yeah. Rock Park Run. That's so, right. Yeah. 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 And they still, well, Claire still competes as well, doesn't she? She does compete. Yes. She's, um, she's, she, well, she's, I think she's trying to go to Europe with Rob. 
Um, they've been competing quite a lot too to try and get to like the internationals and the nationals and things like that. So she's doing quite well as far as I can, I can make out. Good, brilliant. That's good. So tell us a little bit more about the event. Um, how how how's it how's it run? You know, from the, sort of the each one and also the sort of whole series. It's run by a group of like volunteers. We've all got other jobs and we all do this in our spare time. Uh, we've all got different roles. It's a not-for-profit club, so every single penny that's made by County Cross Midlands goes back into the club for equipment and kit. Um, I've been on the committee for approximately four years, um, and I was persuaded to come on by Alan, who's the old chairman, um, because I already did a lot for them. Um, and he said, you might as well come on committee because you're doing enough for us anyway. <laughs> it's a club for all abilities. Um, we try and encourage people to come to training runs and beginners runs to get them into it. We've got Kirsty who runs our beginners runs and she's absolutely fantastic at them. She's always got a kit bag. She's always full of knowledge. Um, so, yeah, so we, we, we try and encourage everybody from the fastest to the slowest to Jack Russells to Spaniels, Pointers, Canny Hounds, um, Euro Hounds, you name it, you're invited. Yeah, well, one of my uh, one of my group uh, runs a Jack Russell, so uh, he comes quite a few times, and, and she loves it, absolutely loves it. So the day, so you can you the, it goes over two days, doesn't it? And can you you can, you can race Saturday or Sunday as individual races, but if you ha- if you want to go for podium places, you have to race both days, and then it's a combined time of the two, and the fastest gets first, second, third. And do you, um, do, so, and then how does the series work? Um, the series, I've written down how the series works somewhere. <laughs> yeah, because it always confuses well, me. <laughs> the winter, um, you gain points for each race depending on where you come, but everybody will get one point. There's five races over the season, um, four weekends and a four-day finale over the Easter. Um, it's... Um. How many do they have to complete? Is it seven? I'm trying to find it. I've written it down. <laughs> total I think 12, yeah, total of 12 race days over the season, 11 count towards the series. And you need to complete seven days racing to qualify for the series in the same class. But after seven races, um, your lowest points will be deleted. So that only your, your top seven score goes towards the series. Yeah, so your fastest race times. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, which is why I had to go and do Easter for four days. I did three days, I think. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite a commitment, actually. That must be hard racing four days on the trot. Yeah. I think people were quite surprised by it, weren't they? Because we're used to doing two, and then even just doing three was quite hard on the body. This year was quite nice because we actually ran with dogs all the time. <laughs> the past couple of Easter's has been too hot, and we've had to do a couple of dogless races. Okay. Although it was quite hot this year anyway, wasn't it? And we yeah. then the course was shortened. The course was shortened and the times were brought forward. We started at seven. So so you take the welfare of the annual animals, oh, sorry, the dogs. <laughs> Sounds like we've got lots of animals. <laughs> <laughs> of the yeah. dogs. So what, what are the guidelines that you as County Cross Midlands use for that, do you know? Welfare of our dogs is top priority. So race temperature and minimising heat stroke. Um, it's really important to us. I've uh, been heavily involved in the research done by Ann Carter. Yeah. Uh, and we're basically, we're the first people to use the wet um, bulb. Um, I'm trying to think what it's called. Wet, wet, WGBT, it's called wet bulb globe um, temperature thingy. Yeah. Uh, we, we did it. Go on. Basically, she's, Although she's not a committee anymore, she's still on the end of the phone. She's still heavily involved with us and she's still the person we go to if we've got any questions or whatever. Um, but yes, we do reduce the temperature. At, we reduce the, the racing at uh, 14. So if it gets to 14, the courses will be shortened. No, nobody will run any further than 3K. And if it gets to 20 degrees, it's dogless. Yeah. Fortunately, it wasn't because that would have been really hard work, especially at Casson, the hill. Just goes straight up at the start. It was horrible. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting quite. 
But if anyone wants to find out more about Anne Carter, we um, episode two, I think it is, Michelle, isn't it? Yeah, we, it's it one is. of our first podcasts that we ever did with Anne and um, Emily. Emily. Yep. I want to say Emma there. Emily uh, on their research in heat stroke and dogs. So it's a fascinating one, especially with the weather as it is at the moment or has been, even in September. You know, it's still, it's hotter now, isn't it, than it used to be? I mean, September's not too bad because dogs are used to sort of like walking during the summer in the warmth. Yeah, um, they acclimatise, don't they, a little? Things just really difficult because they've been running in cold temperatures. So for them to suddenly be forced to run at like 15, 16 degrees, it's, you know, it's a shock to the system for them. That's why we take it, you know, quite seriously. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. So what are your normal distances for a race then? Is it a 5K or a 3K option? We have a, it's, we call it long course to short course because sometimes it's not quite 5k and not quite 3k or just over 5k. So it's called long course. Long course to short course. I'm quite happy when it's reduced. (laughs) You and me both. (laughs) What's called an odds and bods course, which is basically, um, it's um, a not for competition course and that's usually over 2k. And then we also have various um, kiddies races, which, um, 13 to 18, um, under 13s, and then 8 to 13, and then under 8s. So we try and encourage the kids because they are our future. Exactly. Well, talk to me a little bit more about the kids because we interviewed a junior canny crosser back in June um, yeah. before we published this episode. So, um, And we heard about how there's not many youngsters getting into canny cross. How popular are, are your races for juniors? Oh, our junior races are very, very, very popular. We, I mean, last season we had most of the time eight or nine under eights, um, between five and ten eights to thirteens. Brilliant. And then the thirteen to to fifteen, I think it is, or sixteen. So say that again. again. We had probably about ten of them. If so, not more. Just, just go through the. the um, yes, if not. Hold on, hold on. Let's we, we cut out completely again. We we got to fit thirteen to fifteen because I think this is really important that we. Yeah, we, we'll do that bit again. Yeah. So just do the clap again. Just tell us thirteen to fifteen and up how you did because that that's really important. Yeah. So the thirteen to fifteens again. We have between ten and fifteen um, youngsters can vary all the time um but it's what's good is it's both boys and girls it's not just boys that are interested in running the girls are coming up and they're giving the boys a run for their money yes that's <laughs> what i like to hear yes <laughs> so, so can when when they're 15 or 16 can they then run in the adult races is that how it works yes then they move up to the um like the open classes and and tell us about the age range of those because um yeah it's so you go from 16 to let's try and think so then there's it's 17 to 30 which is the open the first open class um then it's 31 to 40 which is then called is they the master no the masters Yeah, master is master. I'm trying to think. Is masters forward? I thought masters was masters. Forward. Yeah, masters is forty plus. Veteran is fifty plus. So the open female must be up to forty. So it's seventeen to forties. Um, so yeah, and then, then that is split between male and female. So I I run in the veterans. Um, and it's really interesting, actually, because and, and there's a few of us around the sort of late 50s that are running and we've been doing all right. Uh, but there's suddenly a lot more coming in in their early 50s now. And we're sort of thinking perhaps we should have another age group, 60 up. <laughs> <laughs> to give us a little bit of hope of getting on the podium. <laughs> Not that I'm competitive. Yeah, it's quite though. a big. It's quite a big age category, isn't it? Yeah. Have you have you thought about that, Wendy? Is that an option? It's something that can always be brought up at the committee meetings um, because the committee meeting on um, at Easter when we did the AGM, um, a lot of the kids want them to, us to bring in um, 
split between male and female on the kids. Yeah. So yeah. we'll try it for 12 months. If it works, then we'll keep, keep it and bring it in. So it's basically try it and we'll keep it if it works. If it doesn't, we drop it. So we're going to try it for 12 months. Um, that's for the kids. And I think that's for two two dog scooter as well. Oh, wow. That's really good. So do you get many kids um, doing the bike or the scooter? Are they allowed to do that? Uh, we've got a junior wheels. And that's over the like the um, not for competition course. So that's up to 2K. Um, and they can do that. Um, but it's just classed as junior wheels. So it's either scooter or biking. Just to basically oh. give them a good. I think uh, that's we do. Yeah. Some that uh, I think our, our youngest was 15 last well it wasn't. The youngest was 5 on a little tiny push bike with the dog with the that. So that was actually quite funny because he was like I don't like running but I like my bike. So <laughs> mom asked us and we said yes of course give it a go and it was so cute to watch. Yeah, they had a little dog on the front and they were just scootering along. It was really good, actually. So if you yeah, if you head over to County Cross Midlands website, um, social media, I think it's on there somewhere. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really good. Talk to me about the uh, novice um, races, because I think County, uh, County Cross Midlands do a really good novice. So I run a group in, in my area um, and I always try and persuade people to race. Um, not not necessarily for competitive, but just to go through that process. And the novices, I think, are really good, really welcome. So I had a um, client with a really reactive dog, wears a muzzle. Candy Cross has done wonders for it. And I persuaded her to come and do the novice. And she I can't say, say highly enough about it. So what do you sort of do in the novice one? To talk us through that. Novice is the short course, so that's usually approximately 3K. Uh, but we do have a novice briefing, which is done by Liz. Now, sometimes she'll do it on site, but sometimes she'll put it online. But basically, it's just to say, um, introduce you to running, um, give room when you're passing, and then she'll talk you through it and she'll say, at the end of the day, give yourself space, give yourself time. If you want to walk it, walk it. It doesn't matter. Nobody gives a monkeys. Um, just enjoy your race. We, we try and talk you through it if we can. Um, and we do always say to people, rather than go straight into open, because a lot of people go, well, I can run 5K. And we go, yes, but it's different in a race environment. If you come in from running a 5K run um, and then go straight into an open with a dog, it's totally different to running a 5K race. So we always say to people, please come in, please start at novice, do at least one stroke, two races at novice, and then move up to open because you will find the difference in basically the start because it's mental starts at like open. The difference between even the 3K open, the dogs on the start line because they know what they're doing, they're, they are, and they want to get going straight away. Whereas novices is a bit more relaxed, there's more time between starts, um, and people tend to be. Um, a little bit easier with people on, on novice. So if you went straight into open, you'd be expected to know what to do. You'd yeah. be expected to know to pull your dog in, know to slow down when someone's overtaking and all that. Whereas novice, it's given that you don't really know what you're doing yet. So we will give them more leeway. So if somebody says, oh, they didn't pull their dog in, it's like, well, they are novice. Yeah. And, and I started off in the novice. Yeah. I started yeah. off as a novice and, it, and I think I did... Uh, yeah, a few races uh, that season as novice, and it, and it was brilliant because it does give you the, the idea of what it's like and um, the type of course and the start, which is quite scary, really. And as you say, when you go into an open race, it, the noise level is um, yeah, interesting. I mean, I get quite emotional watching the starts because it's to me the dogs are so excited and they so want to go, and I'm like, oh, oh this is so happy. <laughs> you know, and I get quite emotional watching it, and and I, sometimes I've cried watching them because the dogs, ah, oh, it's just they just want to go, and if you're a novice, you're going, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you, and you're right. And actually, it's really interesting because this season, Pickle has really got hyper at the beginning of the start, which she never used to be. I think there was one. Did we on the Friday, isn't it? You raced in the afternoon, and I think she said, "Thought, well, what's going on here?" So she was really calm. But then the rest of the weekend, she was like, "Yeah, come on, let's go." Um, so they do know 
what's happening. So going to a novice is, I think, a really good start, Michelle. Yeah, well, I was just going to ask, just as somebody who's never, ever raced, because I have a very reactive dog, very anxious dog, um, and I'm anxious myself about it. I think I probably make things worse as well. Just talk us through the rules then of, you know, are you meant to be pulling your dog in if somebody's passing? Is that is that the done thing? Um, or? Somebody's, I'm... Oh, we've lost you again, Wendy. Do you know, I'm just going to pause. That's it. Do you have to do that again? Right. OK, so if you can just ask, can you remember the question? Yep. Yeah, just uh, answer it. OK, so, yes, we do ask you to pull your dog into the side. But like I say, you are given more leeway and novice because we know that you are a beginner. Um, so but we do stagger start. So it's we don't have mass starts. We have staggered starts. and We ask you for an approximate time on your running. So you shouldn't. By rights, if you've given us the right time, overtake the person in front. Okay, so you've got the course to yourself in theory, if it all works to plan. If it all works to plan, you should be setting off in, in it's 20, it's actually 30 seconds, I think, on, on novice, not 20. So that 30 seconds, unless you've all of a sudden gone, oh, I did a lot of running this week and caught the person, you shouldn't actually be overtaking them because your time sh should be what's put on the sheet and the person in front should be faster than you okay yeah and it it does tend to work even in the open classes it does tend to work like that doesn't it unless um yeah some, something goes wrong I do overtake sometimes so there's all the other normal stuff that we teach Michelle with um you know running up behind someone and telling them they you're there is really important and I don't yeah. think a lot of, well I think people do use it but I think they could use it more. I don't know what you said. Yeah, so communication as you're yeah. sitting as well, letting people know you're there. And, to, and um, I always put my thumb up, whichever side they say they're passing on. So if they say they're passing left, I do like left, say yeah. they're passing, I put my thumb up right. So I know that I've heard. Yeah. They know that I've heard. Yeah. Um, and they can pass safely then. So we would just try and advise people just to make, just to acknowledge that you've heard the person behind. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do that as well definitely yeah, yeah no that's really good and that's something you wouldn't think of unless you'd raced before isn't it so that's yeah. good to know yeah how many people do you generally get on your events Wendy well last season we were selling out in an hour wow wow at, um, at 450 for a normal weekend because we've been selling out I mean they went on sale at five o'clock um by seven o'clock Becky was supposed to be leaving for work and she had to say I'm going to have to sit here and watch it because we've got 40, 40 places left. So I, it was selling I, two yeah. hours. It was, it was a nightmare. I, I think I went on at half six because I got up to teach and I thought, oh, I'll go and register. It's, a, it's yeah, it's a nightmare. Yeah. I mean, Easter, we got 1,200 starts at Easter and that was still sold out by midday. It, that's it's incredible. Just, I mean, I guess that says a lot about how good your races are that <laughs> everybody wants to do them but you you're, you're you're one of the only well you of, of the people we've talked to so far you do everything don't you well you do you do canny cross bike draw and scooter we do we only the only thing we don't do is rigs yeah and your course is so what would you say your courses are like uh, compared to to maybe just a canny cross course? Um, we have to think of a bike going around them. So it might be field edges as well as trail. Um, but we do have to think of lines and we also have to think of dogs running through fast with tree stumps and stuff like that because bike jaw, yeah, they have to think ahead. Yeah. So we do have Ruth, who's a bike drawer, and she sets the courses up because she knows on a bike whether it's workable. Yeah. Yeah. So, so and I suppose as a canny crosser, the, the, the trails may be not as interesting as yeah. if it's just canny cross. They're not as technical, but they're fast. That's all I've got to say about it. They are fast. And, and there yes. are some technical bits. Um, 
Yeah, we I, mean, try, I really enjoy it. We always try and put a little bit of technical in if we can, um, just to make it more interesting for people. But it can't always, but we do try. Yeah, I think one of my favourites as well, I didn't actually finish, I finished the course, was Loco, is it Loco Park? Was that the one with the hills? Yeah. yeah. Um, no. A lot. Oh, Limcombe. <laughs> Limcombe, I think it was. Which I, I twisted my ankle on the start and hobbled round and I was really annoyed because I, it was quite, it was hilly, but it was quite nice. Um, I, I, I thought, thought, oh, we'll really enjoy this. But anyway, it wasn't to be. So I've got to, that's an unfinished event for me. I need to come back and do that. <laughs> Yeah, but I guess, you know, a fast having a fast course that's not necessarily technical, that is a draw in itself, isn't it? You can get yourself a PB, um, you can really yeah. give the dogs a good run. Um, where where do your races take place then? I'm I'm just trying to figure out whether one is within reach of me in up north. What's yeah, your furthest got, north course? Um from most of them around um central, so we try and get them as central as possible. Yeah. We have got one down box end, which is sort of Milton Keynes way. Um, we're trying to look sort of north midlands but finding venues because we have to have private venues because bike draw and scooter yeah we can't do what canics do because they um go on normal trails because of the general public yeah and I when we had imagine it we had canic a couple of years ago and although canic is lovely general public aren't <laughs> and you feel like you can see just stop up stop stop there's a race going on i don't care i'm on a personal best <laughs> in front of people and you're like can't do this it's just too much yeah. like hard work no yeah, which is a shame isn't it um because it's just nice it's just to it was a lovely venue. yeah i never got to that one so um yes that's a shame so as the camping queen wendy <laughs> talk to us about camping <laughs> yes um, we get in now between 60 and 100 campers, whereas before, when I first started doing it, we were getting 20, 25. And you've got a lot of tow ropes as well, haven't you? Yeah, I've got tow ropes. Yes, I do a lot of towing on and off. So, so what, <laughs> it's a good what, job what? I've got a truck. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been towed out. Of, I don't think I've been towed out of a kind of cross Midlands, but I've been towed out of something. Um so, so what 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 goes on? Because obviously the racing's sort of finished by lunchtime, isn't it? So what can campers expect? Um, if we've got a hall or a marquee or anything like that, we try and put a quiz on of an evening. Um, the afternoon at Box End, we'll try and put swimming on down in the um, bottom lake. Um, there's always... Um, we've had talks before as well, whereas like we had a Lucille in talk at Lincoln. Uh, uh, um, so we do try and put stuff on for people in the afternoons it's up to you if you want to come and join it you don't have to like I said the quiz works well um, we've normally got beer or cider on which is in aid of Foxhound Welfare um, which we do support um, quite clearly and they're the, the, like the, the rescue charity that we support um, so yeah we, we try and put stuff on if we can try and make a bit of money for Foxhound Welfare that's brilliant. That's yeah. brilliant. No, they always look good. And again, if you follow social media, especially during the season, you see lots going on. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I want to, we want to ask about climate and we sort of touched on it earlier, but what are you doing sort of environmentally and climate wise, I suppose, for um, as, as Canny can, can Cross Midlands? Are you um, doing anything to help? In what way? Well, sort of the stuff that you use, um, as you set the races out and things like that, um, you know. Um, um, cable ties to string on the bikes. Um, we're asking people to reuse paper clip, um, not paper clip, safety pins if they can. Yeah. Um, at the moment, we can't do anything with race numbers because um, people lose them. <laughs> yeah. But we have talked about trying to, re if people have got them and they're clean, to hand them in and try to reuse them. Um, but that's something that was discussed but wasn't decided. Um, so, yeah, we, we're trying. Yeah. Do people uh, use the same race number throughout the season? Because I know I've, I've seen a few. No, they use it for the same race weekend. Right. Uh, you've seen some of the race numbers after a race weekend. You've got to read the numbers. Especially, although I have got some here. Yeah, a bit of mud, I can imagine. <laughs> Unreadable. 
Yeah, if they are clean, we are going to have a talk about them being okay. handed back in to be cleaned yeah. up to be reused. But at the moment, most people's are uh, that dirty. <laughs> you can't even read the number of the chip. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. <laughs> and what about medals? Do you give medals out or is it all about the podium at the end? Um, it's we, it's all about the series. We do a series, either rosette or medal. Yeah. Uh, but we tend to give dog treats out at the moment. Yeah. So the dogs will get a bag as a finisher's prize, which was oh, what people mm-hmm. wanted last year. Oh, You've that's done... a lovely idea. I like that. You've done a variety of things, haven't you? Because you um, you did key rings as well at a time. For two seasons. They went quite well. They yeah. Like those. Yeah, they're, um, useful, they're wooden ones as well, so they were quite good as well. Yeah. The end of season medal last year was uh, wood. Um, so we don't tend to go for metal. If we can, we'll use wood or we'll use recycled materials. Yeah. No, it's good. It, it, no, it's, it's, a, it's a well-run series. I mean, I'm a bit biased because that's the main one that I do. Yeah. Um, but uh, And because it's local, basically. But it, but people travel from far and wide, don't they, Wendy? We've got a lot of people come up from Scotland, down from Scotland. We go uh, up from Cornwall. Yeah. Um, so a, a wide following, a very wide following. Then so. it's nice because you get to know people and uh, you, you're racing against the same people as well. So it is quite, uh, you get, get competitive with other people as well, but, you know, we get there. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a very unique event. Do you offer um, any race photographs? We have Jackie Burrell on site. I don't know if you've heard of Jackie Burrell. She's our main photographer. She's absolutely fantastic. She gets some amazing shots. She really, really does. Yeah, usually at the top of a hill when you're just about to die, and she's there. <laughs> top of the hill just as you come off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she did some great ones at Catton, actually, at the start. So I really like that because she, she sort of did a series of your start of you going off, which was really nice. So, yeah. Yeah. They were quite good. So, yeah, she does. And over the two days, she doesn't go in the same place. So you sort of come across her as you're racing around. Oh, good. And try and smile. (laughs) (laughs) So just to finish up, uh, Wendy, why do you think people should come to Canny Cross Midlands events and what makes it special? Um, We always try to be friendly. We try to be helpful. Um, We are a club, not a business. So everything we make goes back into the club, goes back into equipment, goes back into us making your races better brilliant thank you yeah. and as i said before they you're on social media you're on facebook aren't you um as canny cross midlands so go and follow them but we'll put everything below and we'll put the website address in the show notes as well wendy so brilliant so wendy thank you so much for your time really appreciate it and i shall see you as i drive in hopefully on nice dry days um or during the season (laughs) (laughs) she's always smiling though so she's your first pot of call as you come into the race she's always smiling so thank you for that brilliant always last but always smiling (laughs) (laughs) that's a good one it's a very good one brilliant well we hope you've enjoyed this series and we hope to see you or wendy and i hope to see you um at some canny cross midlands events and michelle you do you're very welcome michelle thank you that's good to know yeah you sound very (laughs) beginner friendly they are very brilliant we'll see you on the next episode yeah thank you enjoyed today's episode don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends and if you get a moment please leave us a review we'll see you next time on canny cross conversations thank you to our sponsor get stronger run faster 5k find out more about the course at the link in the show notes it's great for canny crossers and runners to improve their 5k time and keep up with the dogs And it will really help you to enjoy running more and avoid injury.